these cars that you're looking at, they were on the table of the Johnny Lightning and Tomica presentation from Tom Zahorsky. He's the senior design manufacturer who uh, over there at Johnny Lightning. And uh, Johnny Lightning is now owned by Tomi. Tomi is the uh, company that brought you Tomica cars. So, Tom is now responsible for the U.S. distribution of Johnny Lightning and Tomica models. So, it was kind of cool because at the Vegas Super Convention, he did a presentation. And he allowed me to record his presentation. And he's going to talk about, you know, what happens. See, this is the Tomica package here. He's going to talk about what happens when he tries to bring stuff to market. It's not as easy as you think. If, when you own a company, you can't just say, okay, I'm going to make this and I'm going to make all the stores carry it. Uh, it's a lot tougher than that. So, uh, Tom, he, was, uh, he allowed me to record this presentation. And now I'm going to share it with you. Tom Zahorsky, he's the uh, senior design manager at Tomi. Oh, yeah, this one was cool because it's got a wheel on top. And it's a rubber wheel. It's not a fake plastic one. It's a rubber one, just like the rubber ones on the model. Anyways, here he is. I'm going to introduce a man that truly needs no introduction. Tom. That guy. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Appreciate you uh, coming out and spending a little time with me. Um, again, I'm Tom Zaworski. I'm the senior design manager for Johnny Lightning. Um, that's Mostly what I'm known for. I've also, uh, just give you a quick uh, history of my career. I've also um, started in 1995 with the company Racing Champions and worked on uh, the Racing Champions Mint Line, worked on Racing Champions NASCAR, uh, and then kind of moved over to, uh, at the same time while working on 164 scale podcast, worked over to work on uh, 118 scale American Muscle, worked on American uh, AMT model kits for, for a few years. Um, all at the same time, working on all those brands at the same time. So um, I've had an opportunity to work on 118 scale uh, or entertainment series. Uh, a lot of the castings that you see out from like round two, those were all castings that we, we leased tools to uh, them. But those are all castings that I had developed in the, uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s. But um, recently, I've most of my, a lot of my focus has been uh, changed a little bit. Uh, some of you are familiar with uh, the Tomica product line, and uh, just to give you, if you uh, don't pay attention to the news, um, RC2 Brands, which is the company that uh, Giant Lightning was under, that was our parent company, uh, was was acquired by Tomi, and under Tomi, um, Tomi made toys from the, you know, early 70s, uh, you know, with the uh, Tomica classic box program, that's, that's mostly where everybody's familiar with the brand from. And then more recently, at uh, Toys R Us launched a product in 2010, which was a combination of um, a couple different product lines that uh, was targeted to the U.S. consumer, but a little bit of a mixed message. So there was a product from the Tamika classic box program, so that's where the vehicles came from. And then uh, the little Tommy kits that are in here are actually from a product called Plow Rail, which is from the 70s. And uh, the, the uh, train line, which is also part of uh, Plow Rail. And there's a combination there of a product called Hyper Rescue. So if you're familiar with some of the Hyper Rescue product that came out of Japan, how much are like oversized vehicles. Um, so that's where this product kind of. Uh, comes into play. This, this product here is kind of what is changing my world right now and my role at the company. Um, so I get, I feel, you know, every once in a while I, I'll feel some uh, emails from consumers and I'll answer them directly just so I get a feel of what's going on. And mostly what I, you know, I'm reading different forums and stuff, but right now mostly you know, what I'm getting is questions like, oh, when's the next, you know, Johnny Lady release coming and, you know, how come it's being delayed or I can't find the product? Well, you know, you're hearing it direct from the source. You know, some of our issues are, we've always had distribution issues with all the retailers, you know, them cut back. Um, and I spoke with a couple of, a couple of, uh, of you that I see here today, we've talked a little bit about, you know, some of the challenges in the retail environment. But some of my focus has changed too, as far as not just working on the Johnny Lightning business. One of my roles is I'm also kind of the, uh, the brand manager for 
or the, the Tomica brand. And uh, so that's getting this product, which is going to be uh, a new version of this product, is going to be at retail in the fall at Toys R Us. We're going to have anywhere from 15 to 20 new um, product offerings. So I've been spending a lot of time trying to re kind of deliver a new message to what this product is and how we can make it better. And uh, uh, one of my other jobs is I'm, I'm working on now is how to get this classic Tamika box program that's in uh, Japan currently, and how do I get it here to the U.S.? And how do I deliver that in a, in a way that doesn't uh, take away anything from the heritage that's been built with, the, with Tomika in Japan? And how do I, how do I uh, put a little spin on it for the U.S., but also deliver a product that doesn't trade anything away from you know, people who collect it um, in Japan now, whether that's through eBay or, I know, uh, through people's you know, travels around the world, and they'll, they'll pick up some pieces of it. Because um, right now, basically, what this product has become, the, the Tamika, um, this is our dual pack, what this has become is a, uh, a product that's kind of a, is delivering kind of a mixed message to what we're trying to do. Um, we're trying to look for a, a consumer that understands what they're buying, you know, whether that's it's a, it's a preschool train product and there's a combination of train play, vehicle play, and, and a little action figure play. What we've been getting is a little bit mixed message of what Tomika means to some of you that I see here today, which is, you know, I'm a, I'm a diehard collector, and why am I seeing, uh, you know, a, a Nissan, you know, Titan or a, you know, a Nissan Juke in the, in, in the assortment of a variety of cars, you know, why come I don't see a, you know, you know, the classic, you know, Thunderbird or some of the old Tamika castings. So that's what I'm trying to do is kind of fix some of the messaging there and, you know, deliver a, a refresh product. So that's kind of taken some of my focus away of, you know, being able to deliver, you know, some of the Johnny Lightning products in the same fashion that I have before. So as, as I, you know, move ahead and look ahead to 2012 and uh, the fall of 2012 and then into 13, what we're, what we're trying to do right now is, is put some more, a little bit more focus on the Tamika brand just because it has a lot more potential for us. Um, Toys R Us has been a partner uh, with us on this product line and uh, they're continue, continuing to show us support and they want to see new products. Um, we've had great success with, with the train element of the, of the product. And so now I'm trying to fix the car part of it um, and, and deliver die cast that's uh, exciting, new, some classic castings, we've had some issues with, you know, just product cars, it's a lot of, oh, that cars just see in the classic Tamika box program. Um, it's not as easy as you may think. Some, some of it just comes to, some of the castings there just have different standards um, for, uh, for testing in, in Japan. So some of the cars just, we can't uh, deliver them to the U.S. In, the, in, in, the, in their current state. They need to either need revisions to um, small parts, um, breakage on parts needs to be looked at, so it's a kind of a balance of, you know, how do we continue to deliver, you know, a fresh new product for, uh, for the, the Tomica brand? And then how do I, uh, you know, incorporate this new um, box program? So I'm kind of working on that. And, and this box program is something that um, you guys are kind of hearing that here for the first time today. No, I haven't, that hasn't been announced. Uh, so it's still, it's still actually pretty confidential. We haven't even shown it to any of the retailers. So um, it's, it's something that I'm kind of taking to heart. I mean, I've worked on a lot of different product lines, you know, in my career. So it's something that I think is pretty exciting to work on. Um, and sometimes it's actually a little more exciting to work on, you know, than China Lane, just because um, there's the potential with all the the, the castings that that, that Tomika has. So sometimes it's it's my challenge when I come to work every day. It's like, hmm, which one do I want to work on more? So it it, it just becomes a, a balance of time. Um, but right now. You know, our current, the, the two current product lines we have for Johnny Lightning are, you know, our Forever 64, which is our die cast body, plastic chassis. We had, and then uh, our Johnny Lightning 2.0, which is a full die cast car. Um, we, uh, we have had some issues, you know, which many collectors have expressed to me in many forms, whether through email or seeing them at different shows about um, what, what, what's happening to the price points and, um, how come I can't find the product? Um, the, the number one, you know, issue 
but it has been the price. You know, when we originally launched the product line, um, it, it, it was a dollar ninety six at Walmart, and you know that was a, that was an awesome price point. We we were able to deliver a product that was an alternative to, you know, your typical Matchbox Hot Wheels car, and they've had their issues with a little bit of a price increase, and they've had some shrinkage um, at retail, which is, has been also a challenge. Um, but right now, what we've realized is, with the success of the the Johnny Lightning Forever 64 product at a dollar ninety nine. Um, we've had to we've had to take some price increases, which um, in turn, Walmart they want to continue to make the same margin on the product, which for them to make continue to make the same margin, their price has to go up. Um, so it's not like necessarily that because the price goes up in the product um, that we make more money, because um, all we're doing is we're you know if, if we're we're if we're at the, you know uh, a cost you know that's a dollar and. Um, we have to say, hey, you know, we need to take the price up 20 cents uh, because of real cost, whether that's through labor, materials. Um, on the other side of the coin is, you know, the, the margins that we can't control at the retailers. Uh, that's out of our control. You know, they, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever gotten, you know, real answers from any of the other manufacturers, but I pretty much tell it like it is. Uh, you know, we, we are in business to be profitable. And when we can't continue to make a profitable product, we, we exit that business. And if I don't you know, find ways to make these products profitable, then those are businesses that we exit. So I'm a designer by heart, but when it comes down to it, if I can't be a good business person, you know, then we don't have a collector business and we don't, these brands go away. So number one, I have to be a business person first and a designer second, which is very difficult to do some days, um, you know, with all the challenges we have. And I mentioned a little bit about you know the the changing retail spaces. You know, sometimes you know, we go into the store, and I take my kids to the store, and I never kind of I let them do their own discoveries, just like my parents did when we went to the into the store aisles, and um, we go into the store and we run into the aisles and. My kids think that every every week when they go back to the store that they're going to see something new there, and sometimes you don't you don't see as much new product anymore. You don't see so many refreshes anymore, and some of that's due to um, you know being efficiencies with producing uh, products, whether that's you know uh, a toothbrush you buy in in one aisle to uh, uh, products that you buy in the sporting goods aisle to the, the toy aisle. You know, companies are trying to find ways to to be more efficient so that their, that their products are more profitable, and in some cases, have less SKUs so that they could produce the SKUs and put focus on SKUs that are, are, are going to make them the most money. So when, you know, when we go um, and, and pitch to the retailers, um, we've pitched them, um, if you could only see some of the, you know, it might have to be a few years from now, but. I'll show you some of the PowerPoints sometimes that we go into the retailers with. In fact, I promise that if uh, on the next event that I do, I'll show you some of the proposals that we go in with. Um, you know, we're, we propose, you know, sometimes six to, to ten new SKUs. Um, that's new pro that new product forms. That's not just saying when I say it's a new total new SKU. It's not just oh, instead of this being uh, you know a hearse with you know a stock looking paint scheme. No, this is a total new product form that may include die casts with, uh, uh, just to give you one example, it could be a, a die cast car uh, on a base that uh, the base rotates and it, uh, the backdrop is uh, you know, maybe some diorama and uh, there could be even a function of lights and sound on that product. So when we go into the retailers, we, you know, we're not just continuing to go in saying, you know, how, do, you know, how do we put more of these on the shelf? You know, we're looking at you know, opportunities for growth, but one of those you know challenges with the growth is is that is finding the retail space. Um, you know, I see you know a few kids in the in the audience here today, and you can ask them you know if I put you know a diecast car you know up here, and maybe I put a a Nintendo DS game and maybe some other electronic device up here, and I'm asking them which one they're going to choose. You know, they might not always go for the diecast card. You know, we as with our passions, we you know we try to 
you know, get our children to kind of follow along the things that, you know, that, that we're passionate about. And a lot of times, that, that, you know, that doesn't always uh, transfer the same way. There's a lot of other influences that come into play. And those influences are, you know, some of those influences come at school, on the playground. And some of those influences are, are, are TV driven, you know, when we're, when we're watching TV. You know, but our job is to, is to show up, you know, a balance there of how we can, you know, get kids, you know, passionate about, you know, die cast toys and then, you know, there's, and then, you know, maybe there's a balance of electronics. But when they, how that relates back to, you know, the, the changing retail space is, is retailers, if you walk into, you know, a Target or a Walmart, you'll, you'll see much bigger aisles for electronics and, and much bigger aisles for, for games. You know, there's the traditional type toys, you know, are going away. And it's not necessarily because the buyers uh, don't want to see these products. They're looking at just how I kind of mentioned of what what items are going to generate them you know the most revenue, and in some cases, you know when you when you have you know like all the other manufacturers that are you know present you know over this weekend, you know, there's a lot of competition out there, and every brand has their you know advantages and disadvantages and and items that we all um, appreciate about that brand. But for the retailer, when it comes down to it, they support the brands that generate them the most revenue, and that's a, that's a balance too. So it's not just saying, you know, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I want this new, you know, Tamika card to be, um, you know, at Target, and I want to, you know, I want to sell millions of units. It's for them. They're looking at it as, sure, I can sell millions of units, but is it going to generate me the profit that I need to be? And if I don't put this new Tamika box program in, I could put, you know, an electronic toy in that same space, you know, and generate, you know, thousands of dollars more each day or every time one of those is sold. So it's our job to, you know, find ways to, you know, to, to um, find products or uh, in, in our lines that, that kind of are a little bit of a crossbreed of. You know, maybe it's a maybe it's a, a diecast toy that you know has some new innovations to it. And those are the types of things that I'm currently working on today with some of my team back in Chicago. Is um, you know how do we continue to you know deliver this type of product in different forms that are appealing to adults and to children? Because if we don't continue to do that, then you know a lot of the brands that you know, manufacturers that are here today won't be here in five to ten years. So those are those those are some of the things that you know. I deal with on a, on a on a daily basis, and it uh, sometimes it you know can be not so fun because it's it's challenging to uh, you know continue to find ways to to be innovative and to uh, you know deliver product that's not you know like all of our other competitors. Um, and right now, you know, the fact that I'm focusing a little more on uh, the, the Tamika brand is is exciting, and there's a, there's a new challenge there, and I think that. That challenge, in the end, will uh, you know get us to where we need to be um, financially, and it'll deliver you know, consumers a better product. Um, and what I'm trying to do is, I, th I think you know, in the roles that I've been in in the past, you know, I've always just been so focused on you know how how can I make a cool car, you know, and as a you know as a car nut myself, that's that's what you get, that's what drives you every day, and that's what you're passionate about is how can I make cool cars and design cool cars and um, as I've learned if I want to continue to, to make cool cars I need to make sure that I'm being profitable with those cool cars that I'm putting out um, so that, that's exciting at the same time because I think I've found some of those answers um, with you know just some of the teams and the collaboration that I have uh, in the teams in Chicago um, uh, I guess while I have your attention to today um, if some of you aren't familiar with some of the other you know, products that, uh, that that are under the Tomi umbrella, um, and under Tomi, you know, Tomi's made products you know from the '80s and '90s, everything from you know, if you guys remember some of the games like Mr. Mouth, and there's been, uh, if you ever uh, have time, go on YouTube. There's there's tons of products if you just search for Tomi. Um, yeah, there's the Isobot robot, which is a, a walking robot. There's some pretty innovative type toys. Um, and a lot of uh, RC type product, and we've had uh, in the past. You know, Tommy's been uh, represented 
in, in quite a bit of different way, more of a manufacturer um, it, of products that they actually manufacture for other companies. Um, some of the, um, I'm not exactly at liberty to, to talk about some of those today, but um, if you ever, whatever your favorite toy is, whether it's RC related or if it's a, if it's a toy product that your child's passionate about, um, take a look at the, the legal lines and, you, and you'll see Tomy quite often. Um, you know, product that everybody's not familiar uh, with Transformers. Transformers is a product that actually uh, Tomy uh, developed and a, and a toy product that came out of the Tomy engineers in Japan. Um, and that's something that we currently license the Transformer toy brand to um, Hasbro. Most people don't even realize that, but there's, there's quite a bit of uh, history and uh, technological history and innovation in Tomy that we're hoping to finally uh, tap into and bring into a lot of our toys. Um, but with our acquisition, you know, we've, you know, over the last few years, um, I came, you know, from the original from 1995, working with Racing Champions, um, and then we acquired the company Girdle, and then uh, I had worked out of Iowa for a few years to working on some of the Girdle brands like American Muscle and EMT Model Kits. Um, but uh, in, I think it was in 2001, 2002, we acquired uh, Learning Curve in the first years, and then acquired uh, Johnny Le Playing Manus, you know, Johnny Lightning. Um, we also uh, we make everything you know from baby spoons, baby bottles, brass pumps, um, and so we have brands you know like I said, first years Learning Curve, um, Compass, where we make car seats and strollers. Um, so we have uh, you know quite a few brands, and through those brands, you know through those businesses being profitable, you know, can we continue to you know to invest in you know some of the things that we're passionate about? So I, I'm, I've always said in, in my company, um, you know, I'm passionate to work on any brand in our company. You know, I've had opportunities to kind of dabble on some of our, the Chuggington brand. I don't know if you, some of you are familiar with Dinosaur Train and Chuggington. Um, you know, those are those are brands that. Uh, you know, are driven by uh, a TV, by TV shows. And I've always said, you know, if there's any opportunity, I always tell the you know, other teams in, in my office, I'm like, I'll be more than happy to work on those brands too. Because when those brands are successful, you know, my brands can be successful as well. Um, because that's where I get the support um, you know, to continue to do what I want to do and, and make the vehicles that I want to make. So a lot of times there's always been a big disconnect. Um, if you've ever attended our Lightning Fest in Iowa um, and can see our outlet store, and you really get to see the vast array of products that we make, um, you'll see guys that, you know, have, you know, have been collecting die casts for 30 years and then you see them, you know, they may be a grandparent, but they're, as I see them walking out, you know, they're, band, they're buying some of our, you know, $2 cars and then they're, they're also walking out with a baby gate, you know, that we make, uh, which is, is pretty exciting to see just because of the, um, you know, the, the amount of uh, brands that we represent. Um, and there aren't too many, uh, you know, other companies out there that, that have, with the vast array of products that we do. Um, as far as on the design side of, uh, of vehicles, I, I kind of wanted to just touch on some of the, uh, I've given and done a few forums um, at our Lightning Fest event, and you know, we always kind of go into details about what it's like to design a vehicle, and um, I know there's there's processes, if you've, if you've heard, you know, sitting through any of the other manufacturer experiences of what, what they do when they're designing a car, um, I said I've had the advantage of of being able to uh, design products. You know, when I first started at the company, I was actually a package designer. So um, a lot of times, um, you'll see some of the products. There's a, a product up here called uh, Lightning Brigade, um, which is a new logo. You know, because of some of the experiences I've had, I I've been able to uh, design products where, like, I actually designed the logo for that, and then you know we'll work on. Um, the development of the casting, and then get to uh, design the decoration for the casting under with no committee. So it's me sitting at my desk and sitting in front of the computer. I may do some sketches real quick for the logo and put it all together. And it's pretty amazing with that kind of committee. Without the, that type of committee, um, sometimes I just have to go through a gut check and just show other people because when you work on it, sometimes all by yourself, you're in this little closet. And you think you know, you're doing something that looks awesome. And, you know, I've had a lot of guys say, "Hey, you know, come up to me and say, 
you know, hey, why did you make that car blue? You know, I hate that blue. That's an ugly blue. You know, and I'm like, you know, a lot of times I'll see something that inspires me, and I'll just, I'll just go with it. You know, I'll just go with my gut feeling, and you know, I, I, I make bad decisions too, just like everybody does. Uh, I'm not perfect, uh, but through those learnings, you know, I, I, I do better. And, as my boss always says, you know, you have to be kind of a, you know, a student of the game and you know, continue to learn. Um, uh, but it's it's been a um, a great thing to be able to be, you know, a part of a, a brand where, um, you know, I've been able to control the you know the development of it and the design of it, and uh, you know, without having to go through, you know, large committees of like, hey, let's sit down and. You know, let's have you know five, ten people pick out what kind of wheels are going to be on the car, or, or what color this release should be. Um, most of the designs, every design that you see today is, is uh, every car that's that's designed is uh, is you know something that uh, I do, and I, I don't have there's there's no huge design team you know like some of the other manufacturers may have. Um, and even in the future, we're working on some brands for. Um, some concepts for 2013 that are going to um, get us into more of a toy-based product as well for for Virginia Lightning, hopefully. And you know, with that, we'll be able to um, you know look at doing some some fantasy type designs that you know provide us um, a couple different opportunities for um, you know finding new audiences. You know, I love seeing you guys here, um, and I. I be more than happy to see her next year. But I like what we need to do is start to find new audiences, because through those new audiences is we're going to grow, and that's that's where the growth will come. And you know, hopefully next year, we'll, we'll, you know, we continue to see uh, more kids at these events, because that's that's where the growth comes, and that's where the kind of the passing of the torch comes. Um, and that passing of the torch is you know something that eventually needs to happen. And I, I'm sure you've heard people talk about that. You know, uh, you know, kind of taking what we're passionate about and passing it on to a new generation. Um, so that's kind of one of the, one of, when I look at goals I set for myself, that's kind of the one of the things I've put on at the top of my list is, you know, is finding that new audience. And um, I, I'm, um, I'm pretty passionate about toys in general. I, I, uh, I collect everything from just most ridiculous things, and I'm, 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 I'll admit to some of this right now. And I've never actually uh, <laughs> said some of these, but I collect everything from uh, marbles, keychains, pins, I mean, these are things I started at, you know, when I was about eight to ten years old. Um, I just started collecting everything. I used to even collect napkins from um, restaurants. Um, and I'm not kidding. Yeah, I, I used to go and, you know, you know, Burger King, McDonald's. They have a new napkin that would come out. You know, no one pays attention to that stuff, but I would go and collect napkins, and I would lay them out on poster boards and, and stack them down and put them up on my wall. It was to me, it was just about. Um, Doing something new and fun. So actually, now even as an adult, you know, I'm you know totally passionate about action figures and cars. Um, I probably have about you know anywhere from twenty five to thirty thousand cars in my collection and action figures. I probably have a few thousand. Um, I have a toy room in my basement of my house. It's probably about the size of this room, and it and it's just my toys. And it, my kids call it the store. They're like let's go to the store. Um, but you know through. Through all the things that I collect, I've had to, you know, some of the things I've, I've stopped collecting napkins, you know, I'm, I'm done with the napkin collection, but now I actually collect hotel pens. Uh, I'm not kidding. So so now actually, one of the first things I did, you know, after I checked into the hotels, I called my wife and I said, I said, guess what? I have a new pen, the Golden Nugget. I got a new, I got a new pen. So um, those are, you know, things that you would think, oh, yeah, I would just continue to collect die cast cards and that would be it. But, you know, when you work on it every day, sometimes you just need a little break from it. and, and, and and go chase something else, um, but uh, as you guys know, as when you when you have kids, or if you have kids, you always want them to you know follow and be passionate with what you're passionate about. And I've always uh, I actually work on cars too, on real cars. Um, I try to restore a car every couple of years, and um, I'm actually working on a Camaro right now. And when I'm on the weekends hanging out with my kids, you know, I, I always want my son to, he's, he's seven, uh, and when my son Owen, when we're hanging out, I always want to see him, you know, get right next to me with the wrenches, and sometimes a little bit hesitant, because I always felt like, oh, if I try to push this on him, 
you know, he'll just, he won't want any part of it. So I kind of feel like that way with diecast too. I let the kids just be passionate about, you know, whatever they want to be passionate about. And, you know, sometimes uh, when, uh, in my household, we'll, uh, you know, we play with diecast a lot, of course, and my kids get to, uh, I was telling a couple guys yesterday that one of the things we do is I, I'll bring, like, especially for the Tomaker product, I'll just bring train sets home. And a lot of the sets that you're going to see in the fall are stuff that, you know, uh, my kids have helped develop. You know, we've just sat on the floor, put different train sets together, different destinations from the Tomica line, and just kind of said, hey, how, what, what's, how do we play with this? What's a fun way to play, you know, with this? How do I make you, you know, as a seven-year-old, make this fun? You know, so some of that direct input comes uh, from the interaction. And it's fun just to see them, uh, you know, be, be passionate about it that way. And um, we only have uh, one role in my house. You, know, you can play with any toy um, as long as it's not uh, a competitor toy. <laughs> but, but we do have a, I'll have to say, we, we don't really have too many rules like that, except for Hot Wheels. That was the only brand we don't allow in our house. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, and when my... Uh, when, when my kids do, they, they think it's funny because I think recently McDonald's had a, uh, a Happy Meal promotion that where it had Hot Wheels in it. Yeah. I think that wasn't too long ago. And, um, there was a there was like an, uh, an off road like Doom Buggy or something. I think that was in one of them. And I looked at it and then you know I, I, I just asked myself, what do you think we should do? Like what do we what do we do with it? Like, it he's like I don't know. It's you know it, it's a pretty cool car. It's, yeah. It's actually not a bad, it's not a bad car. I'll look at it, I'm like, yeah, the quality's nice. I can always appreciate, you know, something that looks good. I mean, I have nothing against the brand, but I said, I think we should, we should get it out of the house, don't you think? And I'm like, let's just throw it out. The, let's, let's open the door and just throw it out the window. And he's like, no, you can't do that. We shouldn't do that. That'd be, that's kind of me. And I'm like, yeah, you know what, you're right. That is kind of me. Let's just give it away to, you know, to some other kid who will appreciate it. Uh, but, um, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, like they say, you know, you got to, Keep your uh, friends close and your enemies close. Um, uh, one of the things that we we've done at our uh, um, lightning fest event is that we've always had different uh, forums where we get to uh, interact a little closer, a little one on one. So if you're, if you guys you know have questions or things you've always wanted to ask, and you anything from our company or the giant league right now, I'll, I'll be more than happy to do that. Um, if you want me to take questions or uh, you want to do it in front of everybody or, you know, afterwards, you know, let me know. I'm always, uh, that's one thing you always get from me is you're always going to get, you know, a pretty straight up answer. I don't, I don't sugarcoat anything um, as far as our businesses or where we're going. Um, I know there, there's been some um, questions the last couple of years. It's like, oh, I don't see Johnny Living doing anything. I guess they're getting out of their business. And I'd be like, no, nope, all you got to do is, you know. Uh, I'm on uh, jail talk and hobby talk. So if everybody's got a question, just just ask. I'll give you the I'll give you the answer. Um, there's always a reason why we we're doing something or not doing something. Um, and uh, you know, for me, we uh, in the you know original playing Manus days and through the original Lightning Festos in South Bend. There's always been that interaction, uh, you know, with the, the designers and, and Tom Lowe and you know, as the businesses have changed, um, it's I totally understand why you know people have said, oh, it's not you know Johnny Lightning's not the same as it used to be, and uh, it, it's I wish it could go back to what it was, and and uh, yeah, I don't deny that. I, I wish there were things in in my life too that would go back to the way they used to be. Um, you know, I. I wish I could wake up sometimes and have not, you know, my knees not hurt me or my back not hurt me. I, you know, I wish I was younger. Um, I wish, you know, for a lot of things. And, you know, it's there's a lot of, you know, things that have changed in the business, and there's reasons why, you know, people walk away from those businesses and, and why they're sold. And, um, you know, there there was, uh, you know, some growth that wasn't happening when the when the acquisition when that particular acquisition happened. So, um, yeah, of, of course, I like to go back to, you know, to when. You know, you can buy diecast, all diecast for you know for two dollars, and um, you could go to Toys R Us and it'd be this huge two aisles of full diecast from all manufacturers, and yeah, those were those were great times. I wish I could go to the back to that, but I don't have that, so I'm, I have to work with what I got, and uh, you know, I'm, I 
you know, for whatever I tackle in my life, I, I give, a, you know, give it 110 percent. So, um, uh, like I said, if there's, if uh, you know, after this, if you guys, you know, walk away um, after this little discussion, you know, if you feel, you know, that you have questions that are unanswered, if you go to, uh, um, you can check out my blog through, through the Johnny Lightning website. Um, and there's, you can post comments there, and I always answer them. You can also contact us at uh, uh, jllightning at gmail.com. And every question that gets uh, sent in, if it's directed to, to me or to my attention, I do see it, I do read it, and I do answer it. it you know, it might take me a week, but I do it. Um, and you know, that interaction, I get guys saying, like, "Hey, you know what? I, you know, I, got, I have a '55 Chevy, and it's, you know, it's blue." You know, just hope it's not a power blue. But I, you know, whatever the car is that they have, I'll, you know, I'll listen to their, you know, comments. And if it's something I can incorporate into a design, I do it. Um, sometimes, you know, that kind of interaction kind of saves me a step. And so I said, well, that actually is kind of a neat looking car. And I, I need a, I have a hole here I got to fill, or I have a car that I'm, you know, I'm looking to, uh, I just would be having to have something that, something I need just like that. And, you know, that saves me, you know, an hour out of my day to have to design something. So that makes it easy. And, it's kind of uh, one of those things I, I totally appreciate, you know, every collector that, you know, continues to follow the brand or, you know, is, is passionate about, um, you know, wanted, wanting to um, join me on the, on the new journey of Johnny Lightning and the new journey of, of Tomica. And, uh, you know, that interaction is who's what fuels my passion and, uh, you know, wanting to, uh, um, you know, to, to, to do greater things. So I, I guess I see a couple of guys here raising their hands back. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, we got a little bit of time, but I, I would like to you know open it up to you know questions, and then we can uh, you know after that if uh, if you guys want to get into you know smaller one on ones after this is over, I'll, I'll, I'll stick around too and be more than happy to answer any questions. Yep. You a general a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. Why is going? Yeah, that, that's actually a really great question. Um, and I'm actually glad you someone asked that because that's something I actually wanted to touch on. I kind of forgot about. It's kind of like a if I go to the if, if I was to talk to the the, the retail uh, buyer for Target or Walmart, um, you know, why wouldn't I want to sell them, you know, two feet of, of Johnny Lightning with you know a Forever 64, a GL 2.0, and an Entertainment Series and um, yeah, of course, I want to sell as many cars as I possibly can. And a lot of times it just becomes, you know, when they start to, when you start to look at what some of the challenges are for the retail environment, there's the challenge of just the physical space, the, the amount of revenue that your SKU generates, and there's metrics that we have to, that, that we have to deliver on. And when you start to talk about those metrics, that comes back to um, the assortment breakdowns for uh, each individual product line. So if I have Forever 64 and I want to put, you know, Dukes of Hazard product in there, or I want to put a licensed product in there, you know, there's a, some of you may be familiar with royalties and guarantees. And when you talk about a product line, you know, everyone thinks that, oh, okay, we make millions and millions of cars. And you got to imagine, you know, you're, you're talking about pennies when you have a product that you know retails for three dollars you know how much how many units you need to move you know to start to really generate some real revenue um, and you're talking millions and millions of pieces so when you when you start talking about licensing you know you can imagine or maybe you can't imagine having to pay a royalty for every time you you, know, you sell a car and you have to pay anywhere between 12 and 20% in royalties, you know, back to the movie studios. So, you know, when, you know, Mattel goes out and gets a license for Ghostbusters and, and uh, Dukes of Hazzard, actually Dukes of Hazzard, they don't have, we've actually had that license since 1980. Uh, but, uh, like I saw Knight Rider recently, um, 
when you when you have to get licenses like that, if you don't have a full product pitch with multiple SKUs, you'll never be able to support and actually earn back the guarantee. And the guarantee is the amount of money that you're telling the, the studio that you're going to generate to have this license agreement. You know, that could be anywhere from ten thousand dollars to five hundred thousand dollars that you need to generate and you're guaranteeing that no matter what, no matter how successful the product line is, whether you generate ten thousand dollars in, in revenue or a million dollars in revenue, you need to pay that guarantee no matter what. So there's a there's, there's some interesting math that goes into that, which means you know for a company to go after licenses like that, you're going to have to have a product pitch and secured product placement to make sure that that SKU and will actually deliver what you needed to do to deliver to make sure you make the guarantee, um, and then to make sure that um, the, uh, the retailers can support that SKU and it's going to you know generate what you needed to do. Hopefully, that's not too confusing. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of it, you know I have always I, I mean I identified um, all the licensing that we did when I worked on Ameri one T scale American Muscle. You know, we had relationships with George Bearers that allowed us to do the Monsters Coach, the Dragula, um, the Ecto-1, Kit Knight Rider. Um, we had uh, Grease Lightning from Grease. Um, uh, and uh, the movie The Car. Uh, those were all castings that I had worked on. Um, and at the time, the, the guarantees and the royalties weren't weren't that crazy. You know, you could you could secure those for a reasonable amount of money. You know, you'd sell you know ten thousand pieces. It wasn't that big of a deal. But now, with the movie studios, have, you know, have really you know they're looking to make revenue. You know, any way they can. So they when they look at you know movies like that, they they're thinking, you know, hey, we can you know this property is worth you know twenty five thousand dollars. So yeah, that's gonna that should be the the guarantee. When uh, Johnny Lightning released the Star Trek series, um, we stopped making the Star Trek series because when when the new movie came out that uh, uh, that starred Chris Pine um, as as James T. Kirk, when that movie came out, the studio came to us and said, you know, there's this new movie coming out. If you want to continue to be a partner with us, this is how much money you're going to need to pay us. And it was just like, well, that's not a I mean, if I gave you guys the numbers, you'd just like, well, that's not a good business decision, you know. And you know, Tom likes a job, so I, I I can't do that. Of course, I wanted to do it, you know, but that's where you know when I was talking about you know making making good business decisions, those good business decisions was why I'm actually still standing here today, because with those bad business decisions, is, you know, you start to lock up agreements that there's no way I would have had I would have to continue with the Star Trek program. I would have had to produce, you know, fifty to sixty thousand pieces of every ship, you know, in, a, in an assortment, you know, and unless you have, you know, placement at, you know, Target, you know, Walmart, Toys R Us, Shop, Go, Meyer, I mean, you need full placement, and you probably even need some not just ads, I and mean, you need some, you know, some marketing that might even include, a, you know, a TV spot, and so, so you know, when we talk about, you know, licenses, you know, like. Um, Ghostbusters or, or Knight Rider, um, you know that's those are reasons why we're not in that business right now. We're you know what I do is I look for licenses where you know I know I can go in, I, I pretty much I can go in and get out, you know with with uh, you know, with little damage. Um, does anybody else? Uh, Two questions. When did Tommy pick up uh, Johnny Lightning, and then the second one was. Um, whose decision was it to put the uh, Amiga line in like the learning centers at Toys R Us? Because if this really catered to the diecast, I didn't see it in the aisles with the diecast. So I didn't even know that they had came back into America until I, I think I'd like to wonder the whole entire story. That's how I discovered them. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the acquisition took place um, last uh, April of 2011, and it got finalized in, in May. Um, and that's when we started to evaluate, you know, what are the possibilities, and you know, we explored, you know, all the different brands, and just try to get ourselves familiar with everything that, that Tommy does. And um, and we're still going through that process because there's a lot of there's a lot of learnings and a lot of integration, you know, from merging um, resources and 
uh, management styles, you know, from company from the U.S. and Japan. So you can imagine there's a lot of, you know, we've had some integration, we've had some, you know, um, off, uh, people from our offices in Japan are now working in, in our office in Chicago, which has been great because it gives us a, an insight to what, you know, of, of resources and how we can work closer together. Um, so that, that answers the, 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 uh, the first part of your question. And the second part of the question is, uh, as I was talking about earlier with this product line, um, the Tomica, when it launched in, in the U.S. in 2010, it was uh, a product that is kind of a, the easiest way to put it is, this was the interpretation from Japan's side of what a U.S. kid and consumer might want to see, which was, you know, there's some train play, you know, and you're able to expand and grow your play, your train play, um, and you know, there's some cool little guy that came with it, and there's diecast because we got we, we have diecast, and you know, diecast is, is successful, but it was it was definitely it was targeted to be um, a product for um, a preschool kid, so that's why it's in the preschool aisle. I mean, you, you don't, you know, not too often do you see train type product in the in the in the vehicle in the boys aisle. So it, it, it was meant to be a, a preschool product. So you know that's why it's there. So that's what one of my jobs is. Is this new product that we have coming out for the fall, is is to find a better way to link all of that play and make it we'll have it make a little more sense. Um, because yes, there's a little bit of disconnect, you know, how a you know diecast car interacts with you know the train play. Um, if you play with any of the Tamika train set product, uh, you know there's roadway, there's cardboard roadway that you know where the diecast is on, and the train has a track. Um, and in the figure, there's the, the, the little Tomi kids is what they're called in, in Japan. Um, the, the little figure is cute, but they also don't fit into the cars. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there, um, but again, it was you know it was an interpretation of of a product of like hey this this could be um, you know a product that uh, a U.S. Uh, consumer might want to see and play with. Um, the other thing too, there's a little bit of a just so you know culturally in Japan, um, diecast is the, the, the Tamika brand in, in Japan is is. It's very popular and they're very passionate about cars, diecast cars, and they give their preschool kids diecast cars to play with. Where we give our we give our preschool kids, you know, baby type toys, toys that are a little bit you know, you would just assume they're a little safer, rounded edges and you know, don't weigh so much and uh, but the uh, in Japan the uh, they give their kids, you know, Decades to play with, so it's a little bit, you know, culturally differently. So, so with that being said, you can see why sometimes when they would deliver a product like this, they'd be like, "Well, what's wrong with it?" You know, it's it's the, that's a preschool product, you know. Uh, but you know, it's something that, like I said, I, that's one of my jobs to, is to help, uh, you know, fix some of that. Yep. So I'm curious. Uh, to me, it made sense for Tomica to be over with the train stuff because it's part of a whole world. With, you got your trains, you got your cars, you got your play sets, your train set. So the the cars are part of that world, and and the other thing is that the diecast is having a hard enough time. You know, maybe Toys R Us is not interested in just selling cars. Did do you have any choice where Toys R Us puts it in the store? No, we, we, at that at that time we 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 didn't have too much choice at that time, and our involvement that was before you know our management. Um, got involved with that part of it, and that was before the acquisition. So, but now we're we're trying to you know fix some of that. Yeah. Cool. Is that it? <laughs> we're all good. Thank you, Thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.